Hey folks, Doug Schultz here with our second in our series around Discovery Better Practices. And this one, and this one, we're going to focus on discovery schedules and a little bit of a finer configuration. Now, when talking about discovery schedules, obviously everybody wants to know how often should I run them. Um, and really, the, the issue, the, the answer lies within within your your own company understanding of how often do I want my CMDB refreshed. Um, do I need to run them every day? Do I need to run them every week? Um, most commonly, we see folks running them at least once a week to update their CMDB. And on very critical applications and environments, sometimes up to once a day. Everything's achievable um, with the right amount of mid servers and resources and access to the targets that we want to discover and populate the CMDB. But over these years, these are some of the highlights of the things within schedules that I always recommend and sometimes seeing my friends out there missing that I hope to bring to light in this video. First order of business is using a good naming convention. Um, I, I've had friends out there that decided to name their schedules, all 340 of them, with the IP ranges they're discovering. Um, that's the label. Hey, 10.10.10.0 is this schedule's name. What I always challenge them with was, well, when that schedule fails, something goes wrong, you have a lot of access issues, who do you call? Where is that exactly in your global environment, that range? And they soon realize that, okay, yes, we are humans. We need to understand where things are so we know who to call. So when you define your schedules in the beginning or you create new ones, I always recommend making them human readable in a sense. Hey, this is discovering the Los Angeles Data Center, the Berlin headquarters, maybe an IP range with it. That way, when you do reporting and you do looking at your errors, you know exactly, hey, in the Dublin data center, I'm getting the mass amount of access issues. I need to talk with the folks that manage that data center. So really think about that when naming your discovery schedules. Secondly, utilize that location attribute. That location attribute that you see on discovery schedules is really handy to the business because it helps tag those CIs with where you know and a best understanding of your IP range allocations that, hey, all these computers are in the Dublin data center. So you can track your inventory wherever it is around the world. Of course, knowing that we're as the best assessment of this IP range and where it's located. Now, when doing discovery range, uh, IP ranges within your discovery schedule, Use the range sets. Oh my goodness, use the range sets. Now, while you can use IP ranges, it works just fine. They're ultimately from the base at the bottom of the barrel, the same record. Um, utilizing range sets gives you the ability to manage and maintain your IP ranges in a central location. So when you're in a big enterprise environment and corporate conglomerate that goes around the world, and they come to you and say, hey, in the, in the Tokyo data center, um, you need to add 10 more of these ranges and remove these other 30. You don't want to go schedule to schedule because you may have hundreds of schedules trying to figure out where exactly those ranges are. By being able to go right to the range set table, I can go right to the Tokyo data center and I can update those ranges as necessary, knowing that they're applied to the appropriate schedule or schedules that I have running out there in the environment. Now, also consider integrating with an IPAM solution. This will be a time saver. So many times, as I'm sure many of you may be nodding along out there, is that we have network teams that may send you a spreadsheet. Maybe they won't. Maybe they forget. Maybe they don't like you. And you've got to fight to understand where your ranges are. But if you build an integration with an IP, like an Infoblox, where you can have an integration run nightly that pull in, all the updates, whether they be newly allocated, uh, removed, or modified, and populating your range sets, you know you're getting what's current out there to what the network team is deploying. So there's a lot of great applications on the store. Um, even ServiceNow has one. We have a few partner friends out there that have those available. So strongly consider that, especially if you don't have that good relationship, that good interaction with knowing what's fresh and real and active out there on your network today. 
One of the things that uh, a lot of folks don't think about is they think Discovery is a set it and forget it. Hey, the network team gave me these slash 16s. I'm going to scan them. And then these slash 24s, I'm going to scan them. And what happens, happens. But what you may be forgetting is that there may be dead ranges. There may be subnets out there that just aren't finding anything. Now, trusting you've done your due diligence and troubleshooting that, hey, I have full access to this range. It's just that it's an empty neighborhood, so to speak. Why discover them? Or they're very low saturation. Maybe there's only two, three devices on that network. Why set those up to be scanning? Because all it is is taking your time from getting your discoveries done as when you need, as the business needs them done within. What I always recommend is when I do have these dead ranges, maybe I put them all into a schedule. So that runs once a month. All right, I'm going to scan what I understand as being nothing for once a month and then maybe one day something pops in and then more things start popping in and now you have an active range you can bring into your weekly or daily schedules or even low saturation ranges that you know they don't need their own schedule maybe it's a lower saturation they fit into another schedule so i don't have to wait for that schedule to complete to execute another schedule it just helps make everything more efficient when we as discovery administrators understand that we want to go after everything that we could possibly find because as discovery likes to say, if we can't find it, you don't have it. Um, but understanding how to best manage and maintain these ranges um, can really help you be as efficient as possible to fill in the amount of time that you have to execute your discoveries. And lastly, I see a lot of folks utilize run, uh, use max runtime as pretty much a crutch. They just want max runtime to stop so everything finishes within 24 hours. Well, a lot of times what they don't realize is that you may be miss you probably are missing a lot of things when that max runtime executes. Maybe you only got halfway through the schedule before it had chance to finish and you hit leave a lot of things out there in the ether that need to be in the CMDB. So when you utilize max runtime, utilize it smartly. Is when you do start reaching these max runtimes and your schedules are being canceled as we see below. Get rid of that max runtime and identify, hey, how long does this actual schedule need to run? My max runtime may have been set to an hour and when, and it's been canceling. Well, when I removed it, it needed an hour and a half or maybe two hours to complete. Well, extend your max runtime. Maybe you have things pausing. Maybe you have issues going on with the mid server or targets that are locking up connections. Or maybe even the instance itself isn't processing inputs as quickly as they need to to be able to execute that max runtime. And if I'm ultimately just not have enough time but I still need it done within the hour, Perhaps I need more mid-server resources. Maybe I need to increase those threads. Add another mid-server to the load balance cluster so I can get that schedule done within what the business says it needs to be done in. So bottom line, again, don't use that max runtime as a crutch. Use it as a tool to help understand how your schedules run, what amount of time they need to complete, and where the resource limitations might be um, uh, identified that you may need to allocate more to or work with ServiceNow in the input side in processing those returns. Well, I hope this helps with the discovery schedule, some of the highlights, and look forward to the next uh, session.